Hey guys, I'm Eric at AeroGuard Flight Training Center and today we're going to talk a little bit about airfoil stalls. Now, I want to make sure that we're clear as to what that means. Uh, most people when they hear the term stall, they typically infer their car, uh, specifically their car engine stalling out uh, and then therefore not producing any power. In the case of airplanes, this is a little bit different. We're referring to an airfoil stall, which means uh, an airfoil such as the wing uh, is going to stop producing lift. Uh, maybe not stop, but produce significantly less lift. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the aerodynamics involved and kind of how a wing produces lift to start with, and ultimately then how it would stall and, and, and re dramatically reduce the amount of lift that it produces. Uh, so to get us started, I want to go over some basic terminology so that we can all be on the same page with some of the vocabulary that I'm going to use. So first we'll take a look at one of our archer wings and we see from the wing tip here we can kind of create a, a cross section of what the wing would look like. And uh, if we draw a line, an imaginary line from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing, this line is referred to as the cord line. Uh, Additionally, if we imagine the airplane flying forward, the, the equal and opposite wind we call the relative wind. Uh, now, there's going to be an angle then formed between this cord line and this relative wind. That angle we refer to as our angle of attack. Okay, so up here on the board I have uh, this cutaway of, of an airfoil. We have the cord line drawn in red. Uh, we have this relative wind that we can see would continue like this. And that angle that's formed between the cord line and this relative wind is our angle of attack, or AOA. So that angle of attack, uh, it really drives uh, one thing, right? We can sort of associate the angle of attack with the pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the wing. Uh, and so what that means is if this angle continues to grow, right, what's going to change is how air flows over and under uh, the wing. Uh, so this, in this example, right, we notice that the air flow will uh, end up coming over the wing like so, and then it basically remains fairly flat across the bottom. What that means then is this air creates like a, a venturi effect between the top camber of this wing and the free flowing air above it. Uh, that venturi effect that's made, as we know, causes this air to accelerate and would result then in a decrease in static pressure. So this is where we get this concept of, of a relatively lower pressure above the wing and a relatively higher pressure below the wing. As I increase my angle of attack, like if we go over to, to this image here, as we increase our angle of attack, and we see that the, the cord line and this relative wind, the angle is, is greater, that larger angle of attack means then that now this airflow <clears throat> is going to create an even sort of tighter venturi effect. Uh, across the upper camber of the wing, which means that ultimately we're going to produce more total lift, right? And as you're probably noticing, where that venturi effect is is where the majority of that lift is produced. So we call that point the center of pressure or the center of lift. Uh, now, Another key element to this that's going to be important in understanding the concept of a stall is what's happening uh, as this air continues to flow around the airfoil. So uh, in this example where we were at a relatively low angle of attack, the airflow would basically stay connected, we say, or, or there's this sort of boundary layer where the air is uh, relatively connected to the surface of the wing. However, the the greater our angle of attack becomes, what happens then is kind of just like, uh, like any fluid, right? So air is a fluid very similar to that of uh, something like water. If I were to put a drop of water on my finger, the drop of water would not run straight off like this. Instead, it would run down my finger and sort of wrap around and then drop off. Well, why does it stay connected? Uh, the answer is the uh, same sort of deal here. It's, 
we would refer to this as sort of like a boundary layer. And so uh, the, the idea of this airflow is that it, it should stay connected to the surface of the wing. Uh, but as this angle of attack increases, what happens is the air is not able to stay connected because that angular difference becomes too significant. And the result is it at some point starts to separate, which means it just kind of creates its own free stream of air. Well, now that airflow is not connected to the trailing edge of this wing, it means that this portion of the wing is not really doing much for us. Uh, and as we increase the angle of attack more and more and more, uh, this separation point is just going to continue to work its way forward. So kind of to retrace our steps here, we understand that the angle of attack is pretty much associated with the pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the wing. Therefore, if I increase my angle of attack, I'll produce more lift. But I'm also creating more separation of this boundary layer from the upper surface of the wing, which means that at some point, that separation could get to a place, right, where this separation is occurring all the way near the leading edge of the wing. Once that separation reaches a point where it reaches this uh, center of pressure, right? once that separation works its way all the way up to reach that point, now where the majority of our lift is being produced is now sort of stalled, right? There's no more airflow at that point. This is what we'd identify as being in a stalled condition, or at least uh, the, the, the early onset of that stalled condition. Uh, this then can be referenced to a specific angle of attack, and that angle of attack, right, where that stall occurs, is referred to as the critical angle of attack. This basically remains predominantly the same uh, for an aircraft, uh, and obviously it's, it's pretty exaggerated in the case of this image, but uh, I think it serves its function. So where a stall occurs is, is contingent upon the angle of attack reaching this critical angle of attack. Uh, now, uh, this would then apply to uh, various configurations of the aircraft, right? Meaning I can stall the airplane at different air speeds, at different attitudes, at different power settings, different weights, uh, none of that really applies as much to uh, the stall as does our angle of attack. This is the only contributor, right? Uh, those other factors may affect where the relative wind is coming from or what, uh, where our cord line is, but the reality is the only thing driving this stalled condition is when we reach our critical angle of attack. Okay, so now let's transition to stall recovery. Uh, most airplanes have some kind of stall warning indicator, which is some kind of a device that's found on the leading edge of the wing that ultimately uh, will sense the relative wind and then in some way inform the pilot through a, a, a horn or siren or some kind of uh, something that identifies that you are nearing the critical angle of attack. That would then prompt the pilot to make some kind of an adjustment, either to reduce the angle of attack by pitching down, or maybe adding power, or sometimes a combination of both. Uh, and in either way, uh, this is how we can ensure that we prevent ourselves from, from entering a stalled condition. If we did find ourselves in a stalled condition, obviously the airplane would be producing uh, significantly less lift, and it would be very difficult to maintain altitude. Great. I hope that this video has been helpful and you've learned a little bit more about the airfoil stall and some of the vocabulary associated. Uh, once again, my name is Eric with AeroGuard Flight Training Center. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.